Hellraiser 3, Hell on Earth. I'm going to get into trouble for saying this, but this is my favourite out of the entire Hellraiser series. JP is the owner of a 90s heavy metal nightclub. I'm sold. Already, this is going to please me because I love the 90s, I love the 80s, and I love heavy metal. So already, you have got my attention. So JP is obviously doing quite well financially, and he buys this ancient-looking statue relic, which has, you guessed it, Pinhead's face right there. So we presume it's just a statue. However, the statue seems to have a life of its own, because if you remember in the second movie in Hellbound, all the Xenobites were killed by Xenobite Chanard, Dr. Chanard, who was some sort of really juiced up Xenobite from Hell made by Leviathan himself. So they kind of have to figure out a way to get the Xenobites back, and somehow Pinhead ends up inside a statue relic item thing. So JP buys it and puts it into his apartment on top of the nightclub so we hear the heavy metal or some music from down in the nightclub. He brings up women up upstairs obviously seduces them downstairs and they're all oh you're a nightclub owner. So they're pretty happy to go and make out with the nightclub owner upstairs and have a sexual encounter and whatever else is going on up there. I'm not going to get into detail but when his current fling gets close to this statue, all of a sudden chains come out, they get her, and Pinhead is kind of alive in there and sucks her blood and life force straight out of her skin and demands that JP bring him more. So JP recently broke up with his girlfriend who was with some other guy in a hospital and reporter Joey Joanne was there and saw something peculiar going on, something devilish. And Terry, JP's girlfriend, comes running out. So Joey and Terry make friends and, and uh, Joey takes her in and lets her stay in her apartment. So they've developed a bit of a connection there. When Terry finds out that Joey's planning on leaving town and taking on a new job, she feels betrayed and goes running running back to JP after he calls her, trying to lure her back in, unbeknown to Terry that all that JP really wants is to feed her to the pinhead statue so he can come alive. Of course, JP is manipulated into feeding uh, women and other bodies to the, the pinhead statue because he doesn't know what's going to go on. Pinhead's just promised him the world and everything's going to be good. You get what you want. Just give me more. Meanwhile, the heavy metal music is blaring at the bottom of the nightclub. And after enough victims, Pinhead comes back and he's alive and he's ready to create a new Xenobot army. And this leads to one of the coolest scenes in all of horror movies, in my opinion. This heavy metal nightclub that I love so much. Pinhead basically goes nuts and kills everybody during a normal, regular night out. Just, just think about it. Pinhead the Xenobot going crazy in a nightclub where people are trapped and cannot get out with heavy metal music blaring. So now, with basically hell on Earth, it's up to Joey to try and send the Xenobites back to hell, with the help of Elliot Spencer. So the story gets a little complicated. If you remember in part two, Pinhead and his Xenobites were actually killed by Dr. Chanard, the Xenobite created by Leviathan himself. He basically splits into two. So the evil Pinhead is stuck in the statue relic, while the good Elliot Spencer is kind of lingering around in limbo. And luckily for Joey, she meets Elliot Spencer and he helps her to try and get rid of the evil Pinhead once and for all and close the portal between hell and earth. Like I said, this one I'm a bit biased on because it's just really a appealing to me. The 90s vibe, the heavy metal nightclub, the characters, it's pretty well acted. The Xenobites are awesome in this as well. It's just a real winner for me. I don't know why it's not rated very highly anywhere else. It could be just a personal preference, but that's what you're here for. You're here for my personal review and this one gets a 12 out of 13. It is my favorite in the Hellraiser series. Always has been and always will be. I don't see them making anything any better in the near future, especially judging by what they've been releasing in recent years. And one of the best parts is yet to come, the credits. This is definitely the best credit scene or end credit role in any movie because you hear Motorhead's Hellraiser. Motorhead's version of Hellraiser being played. What a perfect way to finish off a great movie. So if you like 90s vibes, if you enjoy heavy metal, if you like horror and gore, then this one is definitely for you.